NASA's Orion has consumed $20.4 billion since 2006. The Trump administration just proposed cutting NASA's budget by 24% and eliminating Orion after Artemis III. What spacecraft could possibly replace it? SpaceX's Crew Dragon. It cost only $3.2 billion to develop and has completed over 50 missions with 99% success. But here's the problem. Dragon currently has just 2.5 kilometers per second of Delta V, while a lunar mission requires 6 kilometers per second. Can it even reach the moon? What if SpaceX has already figured it out? Here's the truth NASA doesn't want you to hear. Orion was born in 2005 under the Constellation program with dreams of reaching the moon and Mars. By 2010, President Obama canceled it completely. The projected cost had exploded past $100 billion with painfully slow progress. Congress saved it only because they refused to let America's crude spaceflight capability die. But saving Orion didn't fix it. Since its resurrection in 2010, Orion has averaged $1.1 billion per year in development costs. That's more than three times what SpaceX spent developing Dragon entirely. Artemis 1 in 2022 proved Orion works, but at what price? Each mission costs a fortune, and the heat shield suffered 40 to 60% ablation damage during reentry. It can't be reused. Meanwhile, Dragon has flown 17 crewed missions and brought back 64 astronauts safely. The numbers don't lie. So what would it actually take to send Dragon to the moon? The Delta V problem is real. Dragon's Draco thrusters currently provide 2.5 kilometers per second of velocity change. A lunar round trip demands 6 kilometers per second. That's more than double. SpaceX would need to completely upgrade the propulsion system or find another solution. But here's what most people miss. Dragon's heat shield is already lunar capable. The Pika-X material was designed in 2010 to handle 11 kilometers per second re-entry speeds. That's exactly what returning from the moon requires. It's 30% lighter than Orion's Evcoat material and can be reused three to five times. Orion's heat shield worked on Artemis 1, but it was severely charred and needed complete replacement. Dragon wouldn't need a new heat shield at all, just a real-world test at lunar return speeds. Life support is trickier. Dragon currently supports four crew members for seven to 10 days. The Polaris Dawn mission proved this during its five-day flight with Jared Isaacman's crew. Apollo missions lasted eight to 12.5 days, and Orion is rated for 21 days. For Dragon, the solution is simple but uncomfortable. Reduce the crew to two astronauts. With only 9.3 cubic meters of pressurized volume, it's tight. But two people could survive a lunar mission if SpaceX expands the oxygen, water, and CO2 scrubbing systems. Is comfort worth billions of dollars? Now comes the interesting part. How does Dragon actually get to the moon without SLS? Falcon Heavy becomes the obvious choice. With 27 Merlin engines producing over 22 million newtons of thrust, it can lift 63 tons to low Earth orbit. A fully loaded Dragon weighs less than 16 tons, barely a quarter of the rocket's capacity. Once in orbit at 200 kilometers, Falcon Heavy's second stage reignites and accelerates Dragon from 7.8 kilometers per second to roughly 11 kilometers per second. That's the trans-lunar injection burn. No extra boosters needed, no complex refueling. The existing second stage handles it all. Compare that to SLS. NASA's mega rocket can lift 95 tons to LEO, but it requires an additional upper stage to push Orion moonward. SLS also costs roughly $4.1 billion per launch and isn't reusable. Falcon Heavy launches cost around $150 million and the side boosters return to Earth. Which system makes more sense? But launching Dragon to the moon is only half the story. What happens when it gets there? SpaceX has two mission architectures on the table. The first is complex but proven. Dragon reaches lunar orbit using Falcon Heavy, then performs precise maneuvers to rendezvous with Starship HLS in near rectilinear halo orbit. This orbital dance takes hours. Dragon's laser radar and Star Tracker cameras guide it from hundreds of kilometers down to tens of meters. The spacecraft dock using NASA's NDS mechanism, the same system Dragon uses at the ISS. The crew transfers to Starship HLS and waits for the landing window. 
NRHO only aligns near the moon periodically, sometimes requiring several days of waiting. Dragon stays in orbit, conserving propellant. If something goes wrong, the Super Draco abort engines can bring the crew straight back to Earth. When Starship lands on the lunar surface, the crew spends six to seven days conducting moonwalks, collecting samples, and deploying scientific equipment. After launch from the surface, Starship returns to orbit, docks with Dragon again, and the crew transfers back with roughly 100 kilograms of lunar samples. Dragon then fires its trunk service module to execute trans-Earth injection. The Draco thrusters provide the push that sends them homeward on a three to four day journey. It works, but docking with Starship multiple times adds complexity and risk. What if there's a simpler way? Elon Musk apparently thinks so. The second architecture is radically different. Starship launches from Starbase with Crew Dragon either mounted on its nose or stored in the cargo bay. Starship's 150 ton LEO capacity easily accommodates Dragon plus all the lunar fuel and surface equipment needed. The trade-off is payload mass, but the simplicity is striking. Once Starship reaches lunar orbit, it automatically releases Dragon into a stable parking orbit. The crew stays aboard Starship and descends to the surface. They complete their EVAs, deploy the Viper rover, test ISRU oxygen production, and accomplish all Artemis objectives. After a few days, Starship lifts off and rendezvous with Dragon using the A-Pass docking system. The crew transfers to Dragon, and Dragon heads straight back to Earth for a splashdown off Baja, California. No multiple docking operations, no orbital waiting periods, just one clean mission profile. Which architecture will SpaceX choose? That depends on what NASA approves and how quickly Starship HLS gets certified. But there's still one critical question nobody's answering. What happens when Dragon comes screaming back into Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 kilometers per hour. Re-entry from the moon generates temperatures up to 1,600 degrees Celsius. Dragon's Pika-X heat shield can handle it, but then comes the landing. For decades, parachutes have been the standard. Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Soyuz, Orion, Starliner, and Dragon all rely on parachutes to slow their descent. Dragon deploys four large main parachutes in phases, designed to work even in strong winds or off-angle re-entries. Ocean landings have one major advantage. Water absorbs impact, resulting in softer touchdowns at five to seven meters per second. Desert landings hit much harder. NASA astronaut Tracy Caldwell Dyson described a Soyuz landing as a train wreck followed by a car crash, followed by falling off your bike. Water is clearly better, but parachutes have limitations. Weather delays are common. Exact landing position depends on wind and atmospheric conditions. And if the parachutes fail, the result is catastrophic. SpaceX learned this during a Nevada desert drop test when three of Dragon's main parachutes failed to deploy. The capsule crashed violently. That's why SpaceX developed a backup plan that changes everything. Powered landing with Super Draco engines. Each Super Draco engine produces 16,000 pounds of thrust. Dragon carries eight of them in four pods around the capsule, totaling 128,000 pounds of force. If all four parachutes fail, the Super Dracos fire just before water impact, cushioning the landing enough to save the crew. In September 2024, NASA's commercial crew program manager, Steve Steak, confirmed this capability is now active. If the main parachutes were all to fail, the Super Draco thrusters will fire right before the vehicle would make contact with the water. It's an emergency configuration to save the crew on a really bad day. SpaceX Vice President William Gerstenmaier added that they've flown this system on several Dragon flights before implementing it on NASA missions. The Super Dracos have proven themselves in real tests. In May 2015, they sent a Dragon prototype to 1,500 meters altitude in just six seconds during a launch pad abort test. In January 2020, they kicked Dragon away from a failing Falcon 9 mid-flight during the in-flight abort demonstration. This backup system does more than prevent disasters. It opens up multiple ocean landing zones, making recovery operations far more flexible. It mirrors the powered landing approach SpaceX uses for Starship, which has already demonstrated thruster landings on water 
with a vehicle weighing hundreds of tons. If Starship can do it, Dragon definitely can. Compare this to Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, which lands on runways like a glider. Dream Chaser sounds elegant, landing like a miniature space shuttle with deployable landing gear. It promises smoother landings, faster cargo access, and reusability for up to 15 flights. But here's the reality check. Dream Chaser has never actually flown to space. All test results come from small-scale demonstrations. The promises remain just that, promises. Dream Chaser also requires ideal runway conditions. Only Kennedy Space Center's runway is currently certified for its landing. What about emergencies? Commercial airports can accommodate a spacecraft appearing unannounced in their airspace. The logistics make runway landings far more restrictive than ocean recoveries. Dragon, meanwhile, has completed 32 cargo missions and 17 crewed flights. It has brought back 64 astronauts safely. The parachute system isn't modern or flashy, but it's proven. And now with Super Draco backup, it's arguably the safest crewed spacecraft ever built. So here's what it all comes down to. NASA spent $20.4 billion on Orion over nearly two decades. SpaceX built Dragon for $3.2 billion and has already flown it 49 times successfully. Orion needs a $4.1 billion SLS rocket for each launch. Dragon needs a $150 million Falcon Heavy. Orion's heat shield requires complete replacement after every mission. Dragon's Pisha X can fly three to five times. The math isn't even close, but this isn't just about money. It's about what happens when an entire industry refuses to adapt. The space shuttle was incredible technology, but NASA held on to it decades past its prime because admitting it was outdated felt like admitting failure. Orion is walking the same path, powerful, impressive, reliable, and completely unsustainable. Dragon won't carry four astronauts in luxury. It won't have 21 days of life support. The cabin will be cramped and the mission profile demanding, but it will get Americans back to the moon for a fraction of the cost, and it will do it with hardware that's already proven in space. Sometimes the best solution isn't the most ambitious one. It's the one that actually works. SpaceX hasn't officially announced Dragon for lunar missions yet. But with Orion facing cancellation and NASA's budget shrinking, the writing is on the wall. The question isn't if Dragon will go to the moon, it's when. What do you think? Can Dragon really replace Orion? Or is NASA making a massive mistake cutting the program? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to stay ahead of the space race, hit that subscribe button for Space Update 24 hours and turn on notifications. We're tracking every move SpaceX makes. See you in the next one.